The Cretus and Bishop Show are huge supporters of gay marriage, especially hot, big boob lesbos. Mmm, yeah, that's the stuff. Only on CBRadioShow.com. Yes, Cretus and Bishop Show, CBRadioShow.com. Hanging out with you, doing the show, doing our thing. It's been a jam-packed show and two segments left. And, uh... We didn't know if uh, Miss uh, Kimberly Kane would uh, would uh, contact us or not, yeah. but like a true professional, she uh, she come through and uh, on the phone line, Kimberly Kane. Hello, Kimberly. Hi, hi guys. Good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. There, there was a whole big thing. These guys were giving me a hard time because I had figured out from some of your pictures you were posting on Facebook that you're not in the country. Is that true? Ah, uh, you're funny. Uh, I am. I actually have a big, like, Randy Travis obsession over the last couple of years. Uh, okay. Um, because he's been going uh, insane, mm-hmm. and he obviously doesn't have, like, PR people to, to like, deal with how crazy he is. Uh-huh. And, like, so he'll, like, go to 7-Eleven naked for a pack of cigarettes and crash his Trans Am, which is the best. He has, still has a Trans Am, and like all this stuff, and so yeah. I and I love me some George Jones. I just think that country western um, singers in general, um, maybe not the new poppy ones, are fucking insane. And um, I'm really into insane. So yeah, I have a big western. You you think vibe. insane people are the best people to to obsess about or to be around? Which are, which one? Is the difference? Uh, probably from. Afar, like I, I'm, I, I, de- I don't necessarily want to hang out with Randy Travis, right? But I definitely want to read and read about Randy Travis. <laughs> you don't think it would be cool to hang out with a crazy uh, Randy Travis? Not Randy Travis from uh, 15 years ago, you know. But Randy Travis of now, he seems like a party. I mean, he seems like he's the guy to go to right now. Well, he just got out of the hospital. Um, he was like. Dying. I, I'm not sure what it was. They said he was, uh, he didn't, at the time, he didn't have anything like, you know, in a system or anything, but I think he was in a coma or something for a while. Uh, right. Because, you know, sometimes uh, when, you're, when, you're cra- when you're crazy, sometimes your body needs to shut down and needs a vacation from you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think I think his body actually went into a coma from how wild he's been lately. Um, but you know, he pulled out of it. You know. Are you vacationing to, right now? Are you on a vacation or something? No, I'm. Uh, I'm back in Los Angeles. Okay. I, I was in. I was in. I was in Barcelona for ten days, and I was in Istanbul for four days. Why were you in Istanbul? Yeah. Um, well, you know, um... It's not the usual vacation I, uh, spot. It actually is. Is it? Um, yeah, like, the, the Swedes and stuff, they, they go down to, um, Turkey a lot. Turkey's got very good sun. They got, um, it's, it's a real interesting place. So it is actually a big tourist destination, uh, for Europe. Um, but maybe not so much, um, America? I'm right. not, I don't know. It was my it was my kind of first vacation out to Europe. I mean, I've been to Germany once, but it was um, it was for a corn film festival. Kind of like how all the German businessmen go to Thailand. So I hear, right. yeah, and I hear <laughs> Thailand's great because I mean, the, my friend that I was traveling with, she goes to Thailand, and she's like, oh yeah, you know, you can have. You'll have, you can get a villa for 150 bucks a night with cooks that come in. She calls them uh, breakfast fairies, and they, they like sneak in and they make you breakfast and they sneak out, you know. And and uh, you can be like massaged for like three bucks, three American dollars. So she's like, yes, you eat, you get a massage. You go to the pool, you get a massage. You know, she's she's pretty. The friend that I went with is a pretty decadent traveler. Um, you know, savvy too, and she's the one who suggested Istanbul, and I was like, "Let's go!" You know. 
I know we have a, a friend of ours who uh, who lives over in England right now, and when he gets time off because he works in a government job, so I won't name him. When he gets time off, he goes to Thailand, and he'll spend like almost two weeks there, and he'll get. I want to say anywhere from five to eight women that just spend the uh-huh. entire time with him. And I think he spends about $500 the whole time he's there. Wow. And he's like, yeah. you know, I can have sex with, you know, as many of them I want at one time. They'll they'll cook for me. They'll massage me. They'll, they'll do anything I want to. And they make you feel like the most special person in the world. And he said, then when I'm done, I'll just head on back and uh, do my job. And that's where he spends all of his leave time is over in Thailand with, you know, numerous women, and he just gets a different crop every time he goes over there. Yeah, the one thing that I that I heard about um, Thailand, as far as the women, is um, if you're American, you got to be careful with, with the women there because they'll try to, you know, they'll, they'll be very hospitable, but they're trying to, like, wife you or trap you or get you to bring them back or like whatever you know right so i think it's like half like they're really excited to have some you know they they love the tourism and they they love getting getting our money but um but like as a man you have to be kind of careful with like them too so you know so basically kimberly kane's travel advice for you going to thailand watch out for those pussy traps because if you go over there and get hung in one you might drag it back Uh home so pussy traps you you might Pussy traps all over Thailand. If you're not careful, you might grab one yeah. and bring it back. So, the pussy. I'm traps. sure there's a lot more things you can bring back <laughs> yes. on an accident too. Ex- <laughs> the accidental tourist, the vagina edition. So, um, you've been directing now and um, and putting out some stuff. Uh, do you enjoy directing a lot more than acting, though? Um, I would say. It's- it's very different. Um, I've been directing for Vivid since 2007. Um, I started directing um, under a line they had called Vivid Alt, which was like a completely kind of like artistic, free-spirited thing that was like completely out of the norm of mainstream pornography in a way. Like, you know, tattooed girls. I, I shot a lot of like, Super 8 film, and it was, like, really an experimental time. Right. And then um, when Vivid Alt ended, um, I was brought back on to direct for what I call Vivid Proper, Um, and I started doing movies for them, like, on a yearly basis, maybe a couple a year, and now I'm doing, like, pretty much, like, a movie a month for them, and it's awesome. And I, I mean... Directing is different because you're thinking about everyone and everything that's going into the project, so it's, like, mentally exhausting, and I think when you, like, walk on as an actress or an actor, um, you you have, like, one job, and you're not worrying about catering. You're not worrying about, how, you know, location or are we going into overtime. You're not worrying about any of that. You're just worrying about your your performance. So I would say, like, I enjoy them both very much, but, like, acting is you don't have to think about everything else, and it's a little bit more mellow, you one, know? One sounds like fun, and one sounds like a pain in the ass. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I like to work, and and directing is a job job. You know, like, performing and acting is really Fun to me. Performing is one of those things and, that yeah. performing is an instant gratification, and directing is at the long term when everything's done and said and done, and you see the finished product. That's more of the gratification you get from that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hmm. So, which one would you rather be remembered as, the director or the performer? Um, both. You know, and I also do um, photography too. I like shoot for Vice magazine. And- I have a, um, you know, I've been published in Tashin books, and I've modeled for Tashin and this and that. So, like, I kind of, like, I I want to be remembered for all of it. But I'm sure, I'm sure, like, you know, a lot of people will be, like, 
yeah, she was a rad performer or whatever. You know what I mean? Or like the actress, like I won Best Actress. She took it like so, a champ uh, is what they'll remember you as. They'll she say took she... it like a champ. Yeah. At the end of the day. In every aspect. There you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, whatever. I don't care. I don't care who anyone remembers me as. I'm working and I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. So when you uh, direct a project, is usually like Vivid or another company will come to you with an idea or do you go to them with like, hey, I got this idea. This is what I want to do. Um, both, like, you know, Vivid will be like, hey, we want you to do this project, and I'm like, cool, and then I come to them, and I'm like, hey, I want to do this project, and they're like, cool, you know, or like a smaller company, like I shoot, um, I shoot like these One Day Wonder Girl Girl movies for a company called Triangle Films, which is like an all-lesbian company, Right, and they'll be like, we need um, another movie for this series. Um, will you do it? And then I just come up with ideas for the the movie of that series. You know, so it it all depends. Do you, do you like your projects better? Do you think like, yeah, this was my idea, so this was probably the better one that I did? Or do you feel like, man, I really blew it on this one? <laughs> I mean, you know, there's there's some movies that I'm like, uh, God, I wish I. That's, like, not my best movie, and then there's some that I just, like, love. So, you know, like this one that um, that's coming out now, um, Devil on a Chain, like, that movie I'm really excited about because it was so, it's so different from what people are doing because I kind of, like, I'm working within the sexploitation genre. Right. Um, and so, like, no one's really doing that, like, like, people will do, like, oh, I did a Grindhouse movie, and they'll try to do some, like, Quentin Tarantino par- parody. Right. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do an original script. I wanted to use, like, the strong actors and actresses that we have now to make, like, an original sexploitation movie. What is and a sexploitation so- movie? What? What is a sex location movie? Sexploitation. Oh, I thought you said sex location. No. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, what's a sex you know, location you, you movie? You know how they used to have the plotation movies and things uh, like okay, that? Oh, okay, right, right. It should be a sexploitation movie. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I was like, yeah. there's a second time I was like, well, I don't know what a sex location movie is. What is that's, that? where you point, <laughs> that's where you point at the place you want them to fuck you. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Sexploitation. Give okay. me in the butt right now. But anyway, so <laughs> so with the sexploitation movies, uh, do you... What's the whole process in shooting that? I mean, you really need more strong actors than, than performers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I I kind of, like, it's my job to know who the best actresses and actors are who can actually act and actually perform sex. Right. So I kind of, like, have a line on that, and I kind of know who's good. Like, I use, like, Dana Armand, for instance, as kind of, like, a villainous character, and she's not only, like, the best performer out there, but she's also one of the best actresses. So I got her in. I got Skin Diamond, who's the same thing, you know, like, great performer, great actress. Um, I used a guy named Dee Snoop as, like, my main villain character who has never really acted in a movie before. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a, you know, just... Gonzo guy. He's like a stunt um, cop. Uh, no. the, yeah. The bring out the stunt like, cock. There you go. Yeah. And he killed it. He was so good. And like, you know, so I kind of experimented and I wanted this like, kind of like black exploitation, sex exploitation mix. Like originally it was supposed to be like an all, it was going to be like a black main actor movie. You know, right. and I was going to have Naomi Naomi Banks lead it, who's like kind of our Pam Greer, and I was going to have him play, you know, opposite her, and she couldn't do it, so I actually stepped in and led it because I was like, "There's not a lot of people that can do this," you know, um, character who's like really strong and like really mean and can do like fight scenes and stuff, and I'm like, I have to do it, you know, I'm like, fuck it. Um, She's one of those people I, like, you know what? The best person for this job is me. Is I'll me. step in and I'll pull the reins together. Yeah. Yeah. So so that one, I let it, did my own stunts, and directed it. And we shot it in two days. 
Jesus. It always baffles me how fast they can turn around and make these films, especially ones that are, are more than just straight sex. Is, you know, thing. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of acne and, and storyline involved. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a grueling schedule. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, and also we don't shoot in L.A. County. So I shot all this out of L.A. County in the middle of the desert. You know, so it was like, I would, you know, and that means we don't have props there, and we don't have, so we had to bring in everything, you know? So, you know, I would wake up at, you know, 6 a.m. and load a van and drive out to the desert, and I would drive back at 5 a.m. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it, it was, like, really... You're in for the long really haul. Yeah, that's. That, I mean, yeah, you got to yeah. love your craft at that point because it's it's going to pull you every which way. Yeah, well, I think that if the captain of the ship shows any like you know stray from the project or or like giving a shit, right? No one else looks at it. So I like I'm like you know when I'm the most tired and the most like irritable, I buck it up, like, just suck it up, and I'm like, let's, let's do this, yeah, you know, and I just fake it, you know, like, it's gonna be great. I'm a fool, yeah, I'm, I'm so a fool, I'm a fool, these bitches into thinking I'm excited and full of energy, <laughs> but instead I'm really dragging yes. ass and crying around the corner when they're not looking, but I ain't gonna let them yes. see that shit. Yep, so, so that's, that's my life. <laughs> that's awesome, that's a, it's a horrible life, I feel terrible for you. Now, something yeah. I've always wondered because we interview a lot of male directors, and they kind of insinuate, you know, how they bring in actresses for casting and thing. And they said all the actresses always act like they're the funniest person that they, you know, they think the director's just, you know, a handsome guy and this that the other and flirt with them like they're going to have sex with them and maybe, you know, maybe some you know, adult film directors do have sex with, you know, women mm-hmm. that they're casting. Is there a casting couch for the women directors who are who are out there trying to cast people in films? I mean, I perform with all the guys anyway, but you know, like most, you know, most of the guys that I hire, I've worked with for years. Right. So they they've already they've already given it up. But um, no, I'll like perf. I'll totally perf on like some kid. You know what I mean? Right. Like. I am not above being a dirty uh, porn director. Like, the other day, I was doing a movie with um, this kid, Xander Corvus. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, we're between shots for setting up lights and stuff, and I'm like, hey, Xander, have you ever worn ladies', ladies stockings, like pantyhose? And he was like, no, fuck no. Because he's, he's like, no. And I'm like, I love men like transvestites and I love men in like fishnets and stuff and I was like would you put these on for me just for fun I mean you know just for having fun it's fun just for messing and he's around like, yeah yeah and he's like uh all right and I didn't care that he didn't like it I was like really into it and so I opened this package of stockings and I and was, let me help you and I like pull them up and I'm like can I take a photo and he was like man he was like all right can i hold a jim beam bottle and i'm <laughs> like sure you know and I'm like i let him kind of art direct it a little and i'm like get my photo and he's like don't send that to anyone and i immediately send it to my best friend <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> just, you know like i i will dabble in perving on the male talent um but uh for the most part like Whatever, you know, I've already had them, but I haven't had him, so I was like, ooh, you know. <laughs> you want to see how far you could push it with him. What, what would yeah, you and willing? I totally, yeah, I totally did. Totally did. He totally, you know, was like, he got, he got uh, curved on by a director. And see, she didn't want to tell us about the part where she's like, uh, yeah, you can use that Jim Bean bottle up your ass. Now bend over <laughs> and stick it up your ass with these pantyhose on, you little perv. You didn't tell us about that part, though, so that's fine. No. Sure. I didn't go that far. And she sent pictures of it to everybody. She just <laughs> said her friend, nope, it went to everybody. It was up on Twitter. I seen it. So she was yeah, showing right. it to everybody. Mikey's fantasy. <laughs> My fantasies. 
I'm, I'm gonna talk about yeah. things up asses. That's my my thing. It was it was good times. It was. So uh, you got this the release from Vivid. When's it coming out? It um it is on Vivid dot com right now. Like okay. people can download it, they can stream it. Because what Vivid does is they have a release. They'll release a movie first on the website, and then give everyone the opportunity to stream it. Right. right? And then they'll release the DVD. And so the DVD comes out, like, next week. But right now, Devil on a Chain is available on Vivid.com. So if you can't wait and you need it right now after hearing about her, getting people to dress up in pantyhose, go on Vivid.com, get it now, and then buy a copy of the DVD when it comes out so you can have a little keepsake. Yeah. So get both. Yeah, and I also I, I do, do this thing called Abby Bid, uh-huh. where I, sign, I like sell signed movies and 8 by 10s and panties and like all this stuff. And so like when I get all my copies of Devil on a Chain, um, then I will have them signed on the on Abby Bids, and then people can buy them direct signed from me. And you say you sell panties on there? Yeah, yeah, I sell panties, pantyhose, outfits. Are these like, worn? Are these worn used panties? Dirty panties? Yeah. No, no dirty yeah. panties. Yeah. They, oh, they yes. are dirty panties. So, yeah. When you sell panties, what are, what's the going price for a pair of dirty panties from Kimberly Kane? I mean, it ranges because it's an auction site. Right. Like, what's the most you like, got? Okay. For just a, a pair of panties, yeah. probably like 150 bucks. Wow. For one pair of panties, yeah. Oh, my God. We're in the wrong so, business. I mean, it's a great little side business, you know, because I also run, um, I run a few other girls' sites on mm-hmm. Abby Bid. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, it's a total side business. I have an assistant who, like, boxes up everything and ships everything and, like, you know, it's like a, it's a neat little thing, and people are really excited to be able to own like your clothes. Are these a pair of pennies so, that you just put on for a minute, rub it on your vagina, and then take them off, or do you like wear them all day, then take them off and send them? Oh, I wear them all day and get them nice and stinky, and then I bag <laughs> them up and chip them. Go to the gym. <laughs> She goes to the gym. She I don't, she digs a ditch. I go to the gym. I do some yoga in them. Get them real wedged in there. <laughs> don't she, wipe she, all the way. She eats burritos and farts on them all day. Yep. Those I, are the, so, the, I, yeah, I fart on them all day long. <laughs> she's she's farting all day. So, uh, yes, please make sure we get a pair of uh, signed dirty panties that you wore. Possibly out in the desert would be the best place, I guess. Those would be the best panties. Yeah, right. Yeah. Make sure we get a pair of those uh, desert panties. Desert panties. Those I, I would like a pair of those. So, um, what's stand in them? Yes. Other than the the great way to uh, purchase your dirty underwear, what's a that's a good way for all of our listeners to keep up with Kimberly Kane? Um, definitely on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Kimberly Kane. Um, I like I tweet every day. You know, like I'm one of those people. Um, but actually, you know, like I don't have a I don't have a Kimberly Kane Facebook right. because I did have one for a while, mm-hmm. and then my dad like signed up for Facebook, Uh-oh. which is like very strange. But like he was like, I have I got a new cell phone. It's a smartphone. I I want to go. I want to be on Facebook. You know, and I'm like, okay, I'll sign you up. And I'm on his smartphone signing him up, and then I friend myself, and then automatically. Kimberly Kane tries to friend him because my me was the I ran the Kimberly Kane account. So if you were connected to me, then you would get a like uh, like it would suggest to be like to become a fan of Kimberly Kane. I, I was like, Dad, you probably wouldn't like Facebook anyway. Facebook sucks, mm, yeah. really, you know. <laughs> and um, and then I I stopped my Facebook because I was like, is this what it's doing to everyone? And so I stopped the Kimberly Kane Facebook, and I need to reopen it with a new with a new um, email address, not connected to my personal Facebook, so it doesn't get crossed. Little do, so did little we, awkward. Little did we know, Kimberly Kane's dad thinks she's an attorney in Idaho, so he does. He has no yeah. idea she's in the adult industry. So that no, would he been- does. He totally does. But I don't want. I like. 
it would be really nice if Kimberly Kane's Facebook wasn't trying to befriend my father, you know? Well, I hear the law's coming to get you, and we should probably let you go so you can take off on that uh, panty selling business you got going there. But uh, do you? Have oh a- no, I I live in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> this is the this is the beautiful sound of of my neighborhood. Very good. Well, I was hoping you weren't in a war torn zone, so I'm glad to hear that. Um, <laughs> you, do you have a website or anything like that? Yeah, I do. Um, I have a clips for sale, too. Um, my website's canearmy.com, but it's currently um, being redesigned and relaunched okay. with a iPhone app. Nice. Um, which is really, I think, in the wave of the future as far as, like, solo girl sites. Um, I was turned on to the iPhone app by um, my ex-boyfriend, Driven by Boredom. And he had, he's a photographer. Yeah, we had, uh, let me stop you right there. Yeah, we, we had, had him, on. him on about a month and a half ago because he was about to go on to where he was going to go on this, uh, uh, like coffee table book of like Route 66 or wherever yeah. it was he was going on. He was going to take pictures yeah. of girls and all these different landmarks and attractions. I know exactly yeah. who you're talking about. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, he, when, I mean, that's an amazing project, first of all. Like, he's tenacious when it comes to his craft. Like, right. you know, he's everywhere all the time. I mean, he just got back from shooting The Gathering of the Juggalos. Oh. You know, which is, like, wild, you right. know? Um, so he's kind of, like, doing that, and he went on the Route 66 thing. And so he turned me on to this... Um, this this company who 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 did an iPhone app with him of all of his photography, and so it's like an iPhone app. It, it works on iPad. And it works on the computer, and it's like a button on your phone, just like Instagram, just like you know, fucking Facebook and right. shit. And it's really neat. And I'm like, this is the future. You are a genius. I want one of these. And so when I relaunch my site, I'm going to be relaunching it with. And with an app where you can see all my photos and all the photos I've taken, and like it's gonna it's gonna be great. I'm really excited. And it's like, you know, it's like what it costs to, you know, get the Pandora app on your phone and not have commercials, like four bucks a month or something. You know what I mean? Like it's super reasonable, and it's porn right on your phone. I was like addicted to it last night. I was like going through his his app, and I'm like. This is so addicting. Like, look at all these juggalos and look at all these girls and, like, you know, his adventures and stuff. And I'm like, this is what I want. This is what I want people to be excited about. Kimberly, you know? Kimberly Kane introduced us to the wave of the future. She'll be the one that broke it right here and told us all about it. So we'll have to have yeah. you back on when you launch that website so we can talk more about what you got on there. Absolutely. Bishop? Well, yeah, Kimberly, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, once again, uh, go to vivid.com and uh, check out Devil on a Chain and uh, download it and stream it and then get pick it up whenever it comes out. And Kimberly, uh, we'll talk to you again soon, okay? Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Kimberly Kane there. I like a girl that likes to talk. Yeah? It makes interviewing her so much easier. Uh, I have a question, though. What was she talking about at the beginning? Okay. About Randy Travis and okay. all that. Okay. I know exactly what she was talking about. I asked her, was she in the country? And she thought I said, are you in? Are you into country? Ah, okay. Which she had wrote some stuff about Randy Travis a while back, okay. being crazy and whatnot. So she automatically assumed that. I now, like, with the pictures wow, of her crazy. being in Istanbul... You know, that all comes into play, even though she just downloaded them a couple of hours ago. But she's not in Istanbul. She wasn't in Istanbul yeah, right. still. She was already back in I, the U.S. Because I asked her earlier before we had her on, right. in between the break or whatever, I said, so are you still in Istanbul? She said, no. Right. Okay. I get it now. Are you into country? Are you in the country? Makes sense. Okay. Makes, I was like, what Are you fuck? into my ass or in my ass? I was like, See, what? it's two different things when you say that. Definitely. I was like, what is she talking about? I, I thought it was great, though. Good interview. Yeah. All right, well, uh, yeah, that was and Kimberly Kane. Fuck both y'all for saying I wasn't going to have her own. Well, that actually wasn't her, so. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Uh, that was Christy Kane. Yes. Candy Kane. <laughs> Candy Kane. All right, one more segment up uh, next right here on the Crazy Bishop Show. What will happen? Well, you never know. Hot that's luck. Up next. Hot Magic. Luck. <laughs> I'm next, right here on the Korean Submission Show, broadcasting live worldwide, cbradioshow.com. And as a part of the CNB Radio Network.